myself dr p soumya working as an assistant professor in the department of chemistry institute of aeronautical engineering college so in this session i'm going to discuss about concept of sustainable development population and, and its explosion crazy consumerism so in this session i'm going to cover the topics uh, introduction to sustainable development and what is sustainable development examples of sustainable development and what are the principles of uh, sustainability then threats to sustainability and uh, population population and its explosion uh, what are the effects of uh, explosion and uh, consumerism crazy consumerism and conclusion so this is introduction to sustainable development so the term sustainable development it is the first came to prominence in the world conservation strategy sustainable development it is it first came to prominence in the world conservation strategy wcs in 1980 it achieved new status with the publication of two significant reports so by brentland uh, so here brentland uh, it is uh, on a uh, north and south a program for survival and uh, common crisis 1985 and uh, our common future 1983 and has gained greater attention since the united nation conference on environment and development uh, it is held in rio de janeiro in june 1992 so here the sustainable development uh, it is first came to prominence in the world conservation strategy that is double cs and also it is achieved new status with the publication of two significant reports so by brentland uh, and uh, north and south so a program uh, for survival and common crisis and also our uh, second one is our common future and has gained even greater attention since the united nations conference on environment and development held in rio de janeiro in uh, june to 1992 so what's first what is the uh, development so generally development it is a gradual growth of a situation that becomes more uh, advanced i'm strong than previous one so here what is development mean it is a gradual growth of a certain situation that becomes more advanced and strong that should be more advanced and stronger than previous one this is a development so development it is intended to bring a positive change for human being and its surroundings so here this development it is intended to bring a positive change so not a negative change it's a positive change for a human beings and also and its surroundings development may take place by bringing about a change in policy projects and legislation this development it is unfolding of human potentials for me meaningful participation in economic social political and cultural process and institutions so that the people can improve their conditions sustainable what is sustainable development development means gradual growth of a situation so it uh, it should be more advanced and stronger than previous one so what is sustainable development sustainable development it is a development that meets the needs of the present uh, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so sustainable development it is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising and the ability of a future generation to meet their uh, needs own needs so here grow harlem uh, brentland uh, so first introduced the concept of sustainable development in 1987 so he introduced concept of sustainable development in 1987 he was the he was then the prime minister of norway and the chairman of the world commission on environment and development so here he was then in 1987 he was the prime minister of norway and 
chairman of the world commission and environment and development so he introduced the concept of sustainable development in 1987 so what is the concept concept of sustainable development sustainable development it is defined as the meeting the needs for needs of present without compromising ability of future generation to meet their own needs so this definition was uh, given by norwegian prime minister g h brandland uh, who was also director of the world health organization so until now development has been uh, human oriented that to mainly that to mainly for a few rich nations so they have touched the greatest heights of scientific technological development but at what cost so the air we breathe the water we drink the food we eat have all been badly polluted by the technological and scientific development so our natural resources are just dwindling due to exploitation and in the un conference on environment and development popularly known as the earth summit held at rio de janeiro brazil so the rio declaration aims at a new and equitable global partnership through the creation of new levels of cooperation among states so out of its five significant agreements so that is agenda 21 this proposes the global program of action on sustainable development so in this uh, uh, five significant agreements agenda 21 this will proposes the global program of action on sustainable development so this followed by un world summit on sustainable development in johannesburg johannesburg south africa in 2002 so which emphasized on national strategies for sustainable development so the key aspects of uh, aspect, aspects for sustainable development are uh, so we have two equities uh, intergenerational equities and also intragenerational equities so in intergenerational equity this uh, equity it emphasizes that we should minimize any adverse impacts on resources environment for future generations we should hand over a safe healthy and resourceful environment to future generation so in this intergenerational equity this emphasizes so that we should minimize any adverse effects on resources as well as environment so we should hand over the safe and healthy environment and resources to the future generations so this can be possible only if we stop over exploitation of resources and we should uh, we should stop the uh, we should reduce the waste discharge and emissions and maintain ecological balance so this uh, can be this intergenerational equity so this can be possible only if we stop over exploitation of resources and reduce uh, waste uh, discharge and emissions and we should maintain the ecological balance so then only we should have we will hand over uh, the safe and healthy resources and environment uh, to the future generations so intergenerational equity this emphasizes that development processes should seek to minimize the wealth gaps wealth gaps within the within and uh, between nations so this emphasizes that the development process should seek to minimize the wealth gap within and between the nations so the human development report of united nations emphasized that uh, the benefits of technology should seek to achieve the goals of intergenerational equity so this technology should address the problems of uh, developing countries producing drought tolerant varieties of for uh, certain climates vaccines for infectious diseases clean fuels for domestic and industrial use so this type of technological development this will support uh, the economic growth of the poor countries and help in narrowing 
the wealth gap and lead to sustainability so intergenerational uh, so here this is emphasizes so here that the benefits of technology should seek to achieve the goals uh, of intergenerational equity the technological uh, technology should address the problems it should solve the problems it should address the problems of the developing countries and producing drought tolerant varieties of for uncertain climates and we should uh, produce vaccines for infectious diseases clean fuels for domestic and industrial use so this type of technological development will support the economic growth of the countries so and it will help in the narrowing the wealth gap and it will lead to the sustainability examples of sustainable development so here examples of sustainable development are solar energy and wind energy so here the solar energy so the the greatest advantage of solar energy are that is completely free and it is available in limitless supply so we know that this is a renewable resources renewable energy resource so this is having a greatest advantages so that is it completely free and also available in limitless supply so both of these factors provide a huge benefit to consumers and help reduce pollution this will help to reduce the pollution environment pollution so this uh, replacing non renewable energy so with this type of energy so this both environmentally and financially effective so this solar energy it is both environmentally effective also financially effective energy source so next one is wind energy so this is another rapidly this is another readily available wind energy source so this is harnessing the power so of wind energy so this necessitates the use of windmills in this wind energy by using wind energy we can produce the uh, electrical energy by the wind energy so this is also known uh, um, it is also example of renewable energy resources so this can be easily available in the environment so however due to construction however due to construction cost and fund, finding a suitable location so this kind of energy it is meant to service more than just the individual so wind energy so this is so the construction of windmill is very cost and it is should be we should find a suitable location for the windmills and this kind of energy it is meant to service more than just the individual so this wind energy can supplement or even replace the cost of grid power and uh, therefore may be a good investment and remains a great example of sustainable development so here so even the cost and uh, installation cost and uh, construction of oil windmill is more so we can uh, if the investment uh, therefore the may, may be that is good investment and it remains a great example of sustainable development so it will uh, wind energy it can supplement uh, even or it will replace the cost of grid power so that's why this is an, a great example of sustainable development so crop rotation it is also example of sustainable development so this crop rotation it is a farming practice it is beneficial in several ways so most notably because uh, it is a uh, chemical free and uh, it it because of uh, it is chemical free so the crop crop rotation it is uh, an example of sustainable development it is a uh, very beneficial in several ways so here we, this is chemical free so the crop rotation has been proven to maximize the growth of potential of land so it because of the crop rotation the potential of the land will increases so while uh, also preventing diseases and also insects in the soil so by the crop rotation we can maximize the growth growth of potential of land and we can prevent the diseases and insects in the soil so and not only it uh, can this uh, form of uh, development benefit commercial farmers so but it can also aid those who garden at home so this is uh, very useful not only for uh, 
commercial farmers this is also useful for those uh, who are having a garden at home so crop rotation it will uh, prevents the diseases and it will uh, it decreases the insects in the soil and it will increases the growth of the land potential of the growth of potential of the land so this is the sustainable example of one of the example of sustainable development efficient water fixtures so this uh, according to the apa efficient uh, uh, water fixtures according to epa it uh, takes a lot of energy to produce uh, and uh, transport water uh, to process uh, waste water so according to epa it takes a lot of energy to produce and transport water and to process the water process the waste water and since less than 1% of the earth available water supply it is fresh water so it is important that uh, sustainable water use is uh, employed at the individual and societal level so here so here by using efficient water fixtures so we can uh, reduce the usage of water and we can process the waste water so using green spaces according to the uh, uw madison department of urban and regional planning advantages of green spaces include helping regulate air quality it will regulate the air quality and it will regulate the climate reducing energy consumption by countering and warming effects of the paved surfaces so recharging ground water supplies and it will protect lakes and streams from the polluted runoff so these green spaces are very helpful for the regulating air quality and also regulating climate and it should reduce the energy consumption by countering warming the effects warm it will uh, uh, it will uh, it will uh, reduce the energy consumption by countering the warming effects of paved surfaces it will re recharge the groundwater supplies and protecting lakes and streams from polluted runoff so these are the examples of uh, sustainable development so what are the desired outcomes of sustainable development so these are the desired outcomes of the sustainable development so clean water and clean air so these are the outcomes so fertile soil and good food so this is for uh, by using crop rotation we will get to by the crop rotation so a livelihood and healthy economy so this is also one of the outcomes of sustainable development and uh, an optimum population size safety from poverty and disease social contact and a sense of community work rest work rest and celebration opportunities to learn and halting global warming so we can decrease we can halt the global warming by using sustainable development by using sustainable process so we can develop the sustainable development so by this we can uh, get uh, some outcomes so that they are clean water and clean air and fertile soil and good food livelihood and a healthy economy an optimum population size safety from property poverty and disease social contact and sense of community work rest and celebration opportunities to learn halting global warming so principles of sustainable society are some principles are there so here respect and care of care for the community of life so respect and care for the community of life improve the quality of human life so it will conserve the earth vitality and diversity minimize the depletion of non renewable resources minimize the depletion of non renewable resources keep within the earth carrying capacity and change attitudes and practices enable communities to care for their own environments and it will provide a, it should provide a national framework for integrating development and conservation and also it uh, should create a global alliance so these are the some of the principles of sustainable society 
so here some uh, so we should reduce the dependence of uh, upon fossil fuel so like non renewable resources uh, resources underground metals and minerals so these all are the non renewable resources so we should reduce the dependence upon the fossil fuel we should reduce the dependence upon the synthetic chemicals and other unnatural substances and also we should reduce the encroachment upon nature so we should meet a human needs fairly efficiently so and also old and new approaches hum uh, to human use of the atmosphere uh, uh, of the atmosphere we should use the uh, old and new approaches to human use of the atmosphere so these are the sustainability sustainability pr principles so see these are the sustainable goals we have 17 sustainable goals so first one is no poverty second one is zero hunger so the third good health and well being fourth one is quality education fifth one is gender equality sixth one is clean water and sanitation seventh one is affordable and clean energy so eighth one is decent work and economic growth ninth one is industry innovation and infrastructure so tenth one is reduced inequalities this fourth eleventh uh, one is uh, sustainable cities and uh, communities and responsible consumption and production so thirteenth one is uh, climate action so fourteenth one is life below water fourteenth one is life below water so fifteenth one is life on land sixteenth one is peace justice and strong institutions peace justice and strong institutions so fifth one seventeenth one is partnerships for the goals so these are the 17 sustainable goals so we have 17 sustainable development goals so these are last one is partnership for the goals so we have a threats to sustainability so here unprecedented population growth and their demands for more and more resources to their to meet their needs in an era of consumerism have become a threat to sustainability so here population so here the population unprecedented population population explosion population growth so this population growth and also their demands for more and more resources to meet their needs and in era of consumerism have become a threat to sustainability so there are major three threats to sustainability so these are population explosion and uh, over exploitation of natural resources and consumerism population explosion consumerism and over exploitation of the natural resources these are the major three uh, threats to the sustainability so first what is the definition of population so population means it is uh, defined as a group of people or animals or of a particular kind that live in a space so population means it is defined as a group of people or animals group of people or animals of a particular kind that live in a particular space so this is known as a population so what is explosion so a sudden or very fast increase in the population so in the anything so that is called as explosion a sudden or very drastic increase so that is called as explosion so population explosion means so the rapid growth of world population over the past 100 years so result from a difference between the rate of birth and rate of death so the human population will increase by 1 billion people in the next decade so here the rapid growth in world population so over the past 100 years this result from a difference between rate of birth and rate of death so here rapid growth in population world's population so this is called as world's population explosion so the human population this will increase by 1 billion people in the next decade 
so what are the causes of population explosion so it will decrease the death rates sir the cause first cause is decreases decrease death rate was the major reason major reason so we have best medical facilities so due to that the decrease the death rates was the major reason for the cause of population explosion an improvement in public health and high birth rate lack of education and also migration from one place to another place medical technology and along with the gains in education and the standards of living with the, in many developing nations and also early marriage and universal marriage so these are the causes of population explosion so first major reason is decrease the death rate decreased the death rates uh, death rates uh, it is was the major reason and also improvement in public health high birth rate lack of knowledge and migration medical technology along with the gains in education and standards of living with the many developing nations and also early marriage and universal marriage so these are the reasons for the population uh, explosion population explosion so there has been a dramatic reduction in doubling time of global human population so there has been a dramatic reduction in the doubling time of global human population so in the 20th century human population has grown much faster than ever before so between 1950 to 1990 in just 40 years 1950 to 1990 in just 40 years the population crossed 5 billion marks with current addition of about 92 million every year so to say adding a new mexico every year so in the year 2000 the world population was 6.3 billion the world population is 6.3 billion and it is predicted to grow four times in next 100 years so in 2000 6.3 billion so it is predict to predicted to grow four times in the next 100 years so this is unprecedented this unprecedented uh, growth of human population at an alarming rate it is referred to as a population explosion so rapid growth of human population it is called as population explosion so what is population clock clock so every second and on average 4 to 5 children are born and two people die so every on our on average 4 to 5 children are born and two people die so thus resulting in a net gain of nearly 2.5 people every second so for every second 2.5 people so here this means that every hour we are growing by about 9000 and every day by about 2 lakhs 14000 so for every second 2.5 people uh, we are gaining net gain of nearly 2.5 people per second and uh, 9000 uh, people uh, for every day uh, sorry for uh, for our 9000 people and for for uh, day 2 lakhs 14000 so as a result uh, the ecological life support systems are getting geoparitized so there is a fierce debate on a, a issue as to whether we should immediately reduce fertility rate uh, through worldwide birth control programs in order to stabilize or even shrink the population or whether human beings will devise new technologies for alternate resources so that the problems of crossing the carrying capacity of earth will never actually come so this is a population clock ever uh, so by the population clock we will know the uh, net gain of uh, population so here we are getting 2.5 people for every second and 9000 people for every hour and also for every day we are getting uh, 2 lakhs 14000 people so we should uh, so that the problems of uh, 
problems of crossing and the carrying capacity of earth will never actually come. So here we have three, two theories of uh, population growth. First one is Malthusian uh, theory. According to Malthus, the human populations tend to grow at an expo exponential or a compound rate whereas food production increases very slowly and remains stable. So according to Malthus, human populations tend to grow at an exponential or compound rate. So whereas food production increases very slowly or remains stable. So therefore starvation, poverty, diseases and crime and misery are invariably associated with population explosion. So according to the Malthus, human populations tend to grow at an exponential or a compound rate. So but whereas uh, food production, production of food increases very slowly and it is remains stable. So because of this, the starvation, poverty, diseases, crime and misery are invariably associated with population. So he, he believes positive checks like famine's disease outbreak, Women's disease outbreak and violence as well as uh, preventive checks like birth control need to stabilize the population growth. So he will uh, he believes that uh, positive checks like women uh, disease outbreak and also violence as well as uh, preventive checks like birth control need to stabilize population growth. Second one is uh, Max Maxian uh, theory. So here, according to Karl Marx, population growth, it is a symptom rather than the cause of poverty. So here, according to Karl Marx, population growth, it is a symptom. It is a symptom rather than cause of poverty, resource depletion, overcrowding, unemployment, environmental degradation, and that in turn causes overpopulation. So here, according to Karl Marx, population Growth it is a symptom of a symptom uh, rather than cause of poverty, resource depletion, overcrowding, unemployment, environmental degradation that in turn causes overpopulation. So these two are the theories of population growth. So what are the effects of population explosion? Overuse of natural resources, example, water, land, soil, natural forests. So overuse is uh, overuse of natural resources takes place uh, because of the population explosion. More uh, population is more, so the, the use of uh, natural resources also more. So increase in food demand, so it uh, increase in waste generation, and it will leads to increase in demand of medical facilities and shortage of educational facilities, and also increase in unemployment, increase in crime rate, increase in private poverty and energy crisis, so overcrowding of cities and child abuse. So these all are the effects of population explosion. So next threat to sustainability is consumerism. Consumerism, so it refers to the consumption of resources by the people. So while early human societies used to consume much less resources, so with Dana, of industrial era, consumerism has shown an expon exponential rise. So it has been related both to the increase in population size as well as the increase in the our demands due to change in lifestyle. So earlier we used to live much simpler life and used to have fewer wants. But in the modern society our needs have multiplied and so consumerism of resources have also multiplied. So in the earlier days, in the older days, so we used to live much simpler life and we used to have fewer wants, fewer wants. And in the modern lifestyle, modern society, our needs have multiplied. And so consumerism of resources also multiplied. Our population was so less than 1 million for thousands of years ever since. So we evolved on the earth. So today we have crossed 6 billion. 
mark and are likely to reach 11 billion by 2045 as per world bank estimate so the consumer consumerism of resources so this may increase in the coming years so what is crazy consumerism so we have seen that consumerism patterns so vary greatly between the developed and devel less developed nations so consumerism patterns vary greatly between the developed and less developed nations so however in the modern age of globalization even in developing countries consumerism has fast increased following the footsteps of the west so this is a, um, this is a mad race to acquire more and more so which has been facilitated by easy financing so consumerism has assumed crazy dimensions where different brands of products are introducing new ways to promote consumerism and also the consumers are consuming various resources in a manner that could never be Im imagined even a couple of decades back. So though this uh, trend represents economic growth but crazy consumerism it is a it is a major threat to sustainability. So it is a it is a it is tend to it is a though it is a trending representing uh, economic growth but the crazy consumerism it is having a threat to sustainability because of the consumerism of a different uh, uh, brands of products we are using different brands of products so these uh, for the different brands of products we are using different uh, various uh, resources so various resources these are consumers are consumers are consuming various resources in a manner that could never be imagined even a couple of decades back this that's why the crazy consumerism it is a threat to sustainability development coming to the conclusion so present generation should away away for needs of present and future generation so to pre the present generation should away for needs of present and future generation and also ensure the productive assets available to future generation or not and uh, such technologies need to develop them and implemented which help to conserve the resources and also we should need to prevent the unnecessary pollution and we should help restore the environment whatever uh, wherever appropriate and we need to spread the social awareness to bring massive change in social social attitude and also action must be taken against the backdrop of serious inequities uh, and their impact on the environment and also environment mistakes of the past need not to be repeated as the past patterns of degradation are not inevitable so because of the these uh, um, these methods so we can uh, uh, we can decrease the uh, we can uh, decrease the sum of the adverse effects on the environment so this will lead to the sustainable development thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates